hello and welcome so as i promised that uh, in this video we will uh, open a moving iron instrument and see how it exactly works and we will see uh, in much more detail about its construction and different features okay. so uh, before we uh, continue a small uh, note for uh, you is that uh, this particular video is not that important for uh, exams ex and uh, similar things, but this is interesting. So, if you are happy with uh, theories, if you are uh, if you are a theoretician, uh, no problem. You can skip this video, and if you want to learn about the manufacturing details of an instrument, uh, I will try to uh, explain uh, things here. Okay. So, the instrument that I am holding in uh, in my hand is a moving iron instrument okay now uh, so you can see this is the scale this is the pointer okay and before i open it further we need to uh, discuss some theoretical things before we uh, can proceed further so let's uh, go back uh, to our computer screen uh, okay so we will talk about a practical repulsion type instrument this uh, will of course have a have a coil but before i draw the coil let me draw another thing say i have a i have a spindle or axis like this and uh, it can rotate around a pair of bearings so these are bearings okay so this this spindle or the axis can rotate like this now i will have i'll connect a uh, a uh, piece of iron a iron bar so let this be a iron bar okay and i will connect it to this spindle to this axis like this so now this iron bar can also rotate around this bearing along with this spindle so this can also rotate this entire uh, thing can rotate like this okay so uh, maybe I, I can give you a small uh, demonstration like this uh, over it camera please so this is uh, like this say this is this pin is a uh, axis which can rotate and to it I have attached a iron bar which is this pin this blue pin is a iron bar and this uh, yellow pin is an axis so it can rotate like this okay so you see this blue pin which you think as the iron bar can rotate around this yellow pin which is the axis or the spindle okay. now this entire thing I will put inside a coil. Okay, so now I will have a coil. So this entire thing will be inside this coil, uh, but let me 
cut open this coil so that we can see through this coil slightly. Okay, so, let me uh, open it up like this and So, I am cutting it so that we, we can see through it. Okay. So, this is a coil surrounding this arrangement and let me do, draw the turns also. So, let this be the turns. And so on. I am not drawing it further. Okay. So, this spindle is inside this coil. Okay. Now, I will have another uh, iron bar which I will keep here, which I will draw here. So, close to the first iron bar. But this one, I will attach to the this coil. This uh, so this is this will be attached or screwed to this to this cylindrical frame. So this cannot move. So this is fixed, and this one is movable. So, let me uh, try to uh, show you the arrangement uh, so we can uh, now move to the overhead camera. Okay. So, let this be uh, the cylinder or the coil and let me Let me attach a iron bar to it like this. Okay. So, the arrangement is like this. So, this paper is the coil, the cylindrical coil, and there is uh, this pin. You can see this pin. This pin is attached to the cylinder. So, this pin cannot move with respect to this cylinder. So, this is like this. Okay. And inside this, I have this arrangement this spindle and the other iron bar. Okay. And this one can rotate inside the coil. So, this one can rotate. Okay. But this one cannot rotate. Okay. Normally, these two iron bars that means my blue and black pen they stay close to each other. Now, if I have current passing through this coil say these are my turns. So, let me draw some turns. So, this is one turn. Similarly, this is another turn. If I have any current flowing through it, okay, then what will happen? This iron bar will get magnetized. Similarly, the other iron bar which is inside, both of them will get magnetized. And as we have seen in our previous video, the similar poles will be close to each other. So, if 
this side is north pole then this side will also be north pole therefore these two bars will repel each other and this will turn away from each other this black one cannot move the blue one can move therefore the blue one turn away from the black one so this is the arrangement so the same thing we have on screen uh, here this as soon as we excite this coil if we have any current this fixed bar cannot move but this movable bar will move away turn away from this fixed bar now we can connect springs mm, like this so that the spring tries to hold the uh, this movable bar at its normal position and some equilibrium will be established so this is a more practical uh, repulsion type moving iron instrument this is yet uh, not the instrument that we will uh, see now okay but you should first understand the working principle of this instrument now we will modify it further uh so observe that so here when the movable bar is uh, slightly away, is somewhat away that means at a distance from the fixed bar the force between them the repulsion force will be very less very weak because force is inversely proportional to distance square so this bar therefore cannot move very further so the sensitivity of the instrument will be low this will not turn much now i will make another instrument for you for that uh, so let's uh, go to the overhead camera i will first take a uh, sit like this and then i will fold it uh like a trapezoid okay so you see this side the length is uh, larger this side the length is smaller now i will fold this cylinder uh, this uh, page into a cylinder okay so now this looks like a cylinder but you see it's it's not of uniform or constant height the height of the cylinder here is smaller lower and here the height of the cylinder increases 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 and here it has the maximum height so this is the arrangement okay now now i will have the coil the uh, coil or the turns on top of it so let this be the uh the coils so that means the copper conductor so this will carry current okay and inside this i will have this arrangement a spindle with a attached iron bar like this now what will happen say and and this this uh, uh 
the cylinder is made up of a magnetic material. Okay, so this is a magnetic material. It can be iron or steel. Some uh, not steel. I mean some. Uh, it's a magnetic mat uh, material like iron. Okay. Now see, when current flows like this, okay, this will get magnetized. This itself will get magnetized, and one side of it will be north pole. Another side will be south pole. Say this side is north pole. Okay, so this side, this entire side, is north pole. So I'm writing N, N for north. Okay, so this side is magnetized as north pole, and this side, say, is magnetized as south pole. Okay, so I'm writing S, S for south. This side is N, that side is S. Now, when I have this iron bar inside this, it will again be magnetized. And if my if the right side is north, then here also this should be north. Okay, so this is north. Right side is north, left side is south, and this is inside this. Now, if it is like this. At some moment, you see that this north pole, this north pole is closer to this north pole compared to this and this north pole. So these two north pole ha have a larger distance between them compared to these two north poles because of this trapezoidal conic, I mean this uh, shape of the cylinder. Okay, therefore this north pole will be repelled like this. So, as current flows, the inner iron bar will rotate. See the direction carefully, like this. So this is the direction in which the inner bar will rotate. So this is the mechanism. Okay, and now let us uh, open our instrument slowly. So. First, I will pull this thing out. Okay. Then let me let me keep it aside. This is the coil. This is the coil. This is a. Uh, and so I'm. And this is owned on top of a plastic frame. So these are the two ends of the coil. Inside this coil, I have a magnetic, or maybe iron, magnetic cylinder. And look very carefully. Okay, let me bring it close to you. Look very carefully. Uh, there is this trapezoidal shape. Which we have just discussed. Okay, so uh, maybe we can zoom into this. Okay, so look very carefully. This trapezoidal shape is there. You can see it. Uh, let me draw maybe some lines so that this boundaries are clear to you. See the trapezoidal part of this uh, this magnetic cylinder, and this is inside this coil. This part was inside this coil, and then after that, we have this arrangement. Okay, so this was this thing was inside this. Uh, coil. So let me take it out, turn it over, and see exactly what is there inside. So you see, there is a spindle. There is a, so see there is a spindle around which a iron bar is rotating. Okay, this is a iron bar, iron plate. This is rotating. Let me. I take it closer to you. 
So, you see this iron bar is rotating inside uh, around a spindle around an axis and now let me turn it over. This is the pointer which is connected to the inter to, to the movable iron bar and this pointer moves over the scale. Okay. So, this is the entire arrangement. Okay. Uh, so, this is the main part of this or the main mechanism of this instrument. Let me talk about another uh, important feature about this instrument is which is this damping mechanism. So, you see that uh, behind this pointer we have this plate attached. So, as this pointer moves this plate also moves inside this chamber inside this uh, semi circular chamber. Okay. So, this as the pointer moves the plate inside also moves. Now, if I move this pointer a bit you see it is oscillating for a long time. If I move it it oscillates. Okay. So, this is not good because if I say when I am measuring a current if I apply a current the pointer will move to a position and then due to inertia it can overshoot and then it will come back and it can oscillate. Okay. So, this pointer can oscillate and therefore, it will be very difficult to take reading. The damping mechanism helps this pointer to settle down very quickly. How? I can close this chamber with this cover. I can close this chamber with this cover almost air tightly. Okay. So, now this is an air tight chamber and if I now move this pointer you see it is very difficult to move the pointer and it settles down very quickly. Okay. You see it is if I can make it air tight it does not oscillate. So, it is not moving as much as it was moving without this you see it is moving too much. Okay. Although I cannot make it perfectly airtight uh, like this uh, I mean very uh, the air, uh, but if I can make it airtight enough then you see it is not moving that much. Okay. So, this is uh, the damping mechanism which helps the pointer to settle down to its position quickly so that we can take readings very easily. Thank you for uh, watching this uh, demonstration. Once again, this demonstration is not that important for exams or uh, uh, for, for solving problems. If you are, uh, if you like theories more, uh, then you can skip this video or forget this video. Uh, we will come back to theoretical aspects once again in our next video. Thank you.